Hi and welcome everybody, I'm Doggy Dan. Thank you for taking the time to join me on this free coaching session, during which I'm going to share with you the number one thing that all puppy and dog trainers need to know, need to put into place to solve any puppy or dog behavioral issue. So we're going to cover that off. It's like the missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle and it's absolutely amazing when you understand it and put it into place. Then I'm also going to cover off three of the biggest, most common behavioral issues. We're going to take a look at, first of all, dogs who don't come when they're called. So recall, people who've got problems with recall with their dogs. Then we're going to have a look at dog aggression, probably the most feared of all dog behavioral issues. And then we're going to have a look at dogs who pull on the leash, probably the most common of all dog behavioral issues. Then when we've done that, I'm going to show you where you can get a whole load more information um, tips, tools, techniques, all that sort of stuff. Not just about these three issues, but about loads more problems, behavioral issues, because I know some of you are going to want a ton more information. You've probably got lots of different little issues. You may have a puppy, and you may want a complete puppy training program. So I'm going to show you my dog training program, and you're going to absolutely love that. So I'll show you that at the end. Um, but now I think we're ready to get started. We'll jump into the, the presentation. I'll show you that, and we'll go through that now and you're going to enjoy it. So let me just switch screens here and get the presentation up. Here we go. So just bear with me. Here we go. Just changing screens to the presentation. Okay. So here's me, Doggy Dan, with the little doggy. Okay, let us get started. And these are the three issues that we're going to cover off. And I'm going to give you my, an hour of my absolute best, my best tools, tips, tricks, techniques. So to, to kick off, basically, recall, I'm going to explain exactly why your dog or new puppy is not coming to you when you call. And you might think that might sound a bit like, well, how, that's arrogant. How can you know why my puppy's not coming, but when I give you the answer, it'll make total sense to you. Then I'm going to show you how to set yourself up to win rather than lose, because most people are actually setting themselves up to lose when they train their dog or the puppy without even realizing it. And I'm going to go through the biggest mistake that people make with recall. Dog aggression. We're going to have a look at why dog aggression is actually so misunderstood, and the solution is is not what I would recommend. The you know the typical solution that people apply is not. I don't think it's the, the smartest way of working with your dog. I'm going to show you a completely different technique and a completely different approach to uh, dog solving dog aggression problems. The only thing you're going to the only problem you're going to have with this technique is that you may think it's too simple and too amazing, but I promise you I use it and I use it because it actually works and I see it working all the time. And I'm going to go through the, a very simple step that you have to take at the beginning which a lot of people are missing. And I'm also for you owners who don't have dog behavioral issues in the area of aggression, maybe you've got a puppy or um, you've got a dog who's showing a little bit but not too much, I'm going to show you how to prevent dog aggression from occurring. Then on to pulling on the leash, we're going to have a look at what's going on from your puppy's point of view, from your, through your dog eyes, what does your dog see when you pick up that leash because it's very different from what you're probably thinking. And I'm going to show you why you simply can't outmuscle your dog, no matter how long you spend doing it, and why all the behavioral issues which occur outside of your home are actually connected to how well your dog walks on the leash. And with the, each of these three behavioral issues, I'm going to show you some great tools, techniques, tips for training your dog, but I'm also going to show you how they all link in with this number one thing that you have to understand to solve any dog behavioral issue. This missing piece of the jigsaw is connected to all these behavioral issues. So, let's get started. I think we're ready to rock and roll. Are you ready? You're going to absolutely love this. So get, do get settled, get relaxed, grab your favorite drink and grab a pen and paper because I'm, I'm going to share with you some great stuff so you might want to take some notes. This stuff is really powerful. You know, I mean, it's changed my life this method of working with dogs. I apply it to more than just my own dogs and, and uh, consultations when I work with other people's dogs. I actually apply it 
throughout many areas of my life because it's a very gentle, kind method. It's not about beating your chest and using force and aggression and fear. It's a very clever method which understands how to best communicate with your dog, what you want them to do, and how to get them to sort of follow you. So this is life-changing stuff. I apply this with my children now. I, I, I take part of it into my relationship with my wife. In every relationship that I actually have, I've understood now that this is a great way of working. So it's a beautiful, a beautiful method, which I think you're going to absolutely love. And I always say this at the beginning of these sort of uh, coaching sessions. If you're looking for information, then stay tuned because I'm going to share with you lots of training tips, information. But if you're looking for a transformation in your life, if you're looking for a transformation with the relationship that you have with your dog, into one of those beautiful relationships where you can walk down the street, take your dog anywhere, have them off leash, and just have people look at you and go, wow, you have an amazing dog there, an amazing connection, then it's absolutely possible. I've just had some texts come through this morning from a lady I worked with yesterday, and she's literally telling me, wow, the dog wasn't scared of the fireworks last night. She took the dog to the beach, off leash, walked perfectly on the lead, looking up at her, came when she called it. And... Uh, that's just brilliant. I only worked with her yesterday and I'm already getting a happy text coming through from her. So, let's get started. My promise, my promise to you is this. This method works no matter what sort of size, breed, age of dog you have. These are just some of the dogs I've worked with. I'm just giving you an idea of I work with puppies, older dogs, huge dogs. There's a dog up there who weighs uh, close to 100 kilos. But it doesn't matter what size or age or breed your dog is, it doesn't matter how many people you've worked with, I promise you this method is very powerful and absolutely will work no matter what the situation that you're in. Over the years I've worked with several thousand dogs and I know the changes that have taken place using this method and that's why I'm so passionate about sharing it with you. I know it works, I know it will work for your dog, so if you're just wanting to find a solution to the problem that you've got, then sit tight because this is going to make so much sense and the beautiful thing is you can start putting this entire method in place tonight. You can put it in place today. So here's the plan of attack. There's lots coming up. First of all, we're almost through this introduction. I'm going to move quickly on to a little bit about me, a little bit about this method, how it's come about, what it is, and then we're going to touch on something which is very important. It's dog training and dog psychology and the big difference between them because there is a huge difference. And it's important to understand this difference because this is almost the, sort of the start of the missing piece of the jigsaw. This is the bit which is going to turn everything around when you understand that you can't just do dog training, dog psychology and understanding how your dog's brain is actually working and the messages that you're actually giving them and what it means to your dog is actually very, very important and it's different from ours. Then we're going to touch on the three problems. We're going to go through dog recall dog aggression, pulling on the leash, and then we're going to just clarify that missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle in there and do some maybe a couple of questions in, at the end if we have time. And for all of you who stay on till the end, you know, you're getting this PDF of the notes. Uh, somebody who's going to actually win three months of free coaching worth well over $100. So somebody's going to get access to my video um, dog training video site. Um, somebody who's signed up to this uh, coaching session. So we'll announce the winner at the end and um, you're all going to get a nice special offer as well, everyone who stays to the end. So stay tuned if any of that sounds interesting. Okay, about me. I'm aware that some of you have probably got no idea who I am, so I thought I'd just touch on who I am and, and what I do. This is obviously me with my little puppy Moses. I think he's aged about 10, 12 weeks here maybe. And this is just down at our local beach, not far from where we live and um, yeah, we frequent here very often. I live in New Zealand but I actually was born in the UK and moved here in 2000 so I've lived here about 14 years now and worked as a dog, professional dog trainer for many many years. Primarily the work I do is one-on-one -on -one dog consultations with pretty much dogs with pretty serious behavioral issues to be quite honest. I do do some puppy work uh, puppy classes. I ran a puppy class yesterday with 13 little puppies, which was absolutely fantastic. But generally speaking, it's the bottom of the cliff stuff, the more serious dog behavioral issues that I'm called up to, to try and help and turn around. You name it, I've seen it, worked with thousands of dogs, uh, every sort of behavioral issue. And in terms of my experience, I, I like to say that the dogs are my judge. I ask the dog owners 
after a consultation. How is it going? When they say great, and I haven't used any fear or aggression or, or anything like that, and they say the dogs have changed, I know that I'm on the right track. I know if the dogs are happy and the owners are happy, and we haven't, we're not forcing the dogs to do anything, then I know I'm onto a good way of working. And I've learned so much from the dogs over the years. They show me what works, the dogs I'm working with, and my own dogs, not just in training, but actually, like I say, in many areas, other areas of life. They show me a new way of living, a new way of being a calmer and taking a gentler approach to life. So this is, uh, yeah, just a little clip. This is the video dog training program, which I've been uh, running for about five years now with hundreds of videos. It's uh, the SPCA actually uh, recommend it. It's on their home page and lots of other uh, breeders, rescue centers, individuals use it for coaching and learning and uh, just solving their dog behavioral issues. I've also written a book last year, What the Dogs Taught Me About Being a Parent, because like I say, this method is so powerful. It's an incredibly beautiful way of working um, with, with your children, with your dogs, rather than trying to force and control them. So that was printed by uh, Random House or Random House Publishing last year. Okay, the method itself. Let's have a little look at the method, because there are so many different methods out there. What is this method? How does it work? I guess... The first thing to say is I'm very much an open open book and I'm a, I've, I was like an open funnel when I wanted to find the best dog training method many, many years ago. So I was like a funnel. I went around collecting all the best dog training tips and techniques. I studied all the best dog trainers in the world, all the best methods. I studied books, DVDs, courses, went on seminars and I put them all in the top of my funnel. I said, well, let's have a look at them all and let's see which ones work. And I took the best out of all of them and I've come up with this. And it was interesting because when I was studying all these different dog training methods, it, it sort of appeared to me that was there was one group who sort of said, let's just use loads and loads of positive reinforcement and nothing else. And, and that, that really appealed to me. I thought, yeah, I want to be positive in my training. And it is very positive and kind and gentle. But I also didn't want to just end up bribing my dog constantly. And it's amazing how many people I work with who have found themselves in that position. All they're doing, they're saying, is if I've got chicken and cheese in my hand, I can bribe and corrupt my dog, but my dog won't listen to me. They don't respect me if I don't have food. And I didn't want that to be the dog training method that I adapted. The other side of it was there was a lot of people saying, oh, you just rough and tumble your dog. You just force them. And there's a lot of you know gadgets and things out there that I would never use, such as these. there's some pretty sharp... Uh, there's some pretty nasty devices. Let's just leave it at that. Electric collars and all the rest. I don't want to go down that track of just using force and aggression and fear to control my dog. And I didn't want it to be, it to be a method where I could do it because I'm six foot five and 100 and uh, 110 kilos. But you had to be my sort of shape and have my strength to control the dog. I didn't want it to be a physical thing. I wanted anybody to be able to do it. And I've worked with many, many people over the years who've won their dogs. I've worked with blind people, I've worked with deaf people, I've worked with some very small, frail people, and this method works, no matter how old or what size you are, it's because it wins your dog's mind, and that's the really important bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, this is the method that I wanted to adapt. I wanted to adapt a sort of a simpler way of almost working with our dogs. Dogs where they chose to follow us. They chose to do what we were asking them to do. And I've got four dogs of my own now. There's four on the property. And I've seen some unbelievable changes in my own dogs by putting this method in place. And over the years, I've realized that, you know, I've tweaked it and I've uh, fine-tuned it. But the overall, the basics, the foundation is absolutely in cement. And that's what I'm going to share with you. This missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle is the absolute key and uh, I'd like to change the world of dog training quite a bit because I'm learning all the time. And what I'm actually learning is if you get the missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle in place, your dog is super intelligent. They know what you're asking most of the time. And that's the bit we actually, actually get wrong. We think they're stupid and they don't understand, but they do. We've just got this piece missing, and that's what I'm going to touch on very soon. Okay. So 
I talk about all the dogs. I've mentioned the thousands of dogs I worked, but this is my probably my biggest challenge and uh, my biggest learning. Little Inca, this is one of my dogs. She was my ultimate test. When I picked her up from the, the SBCA, she was pretty fearful, timid, nervous. There was no nobody taken her. She was the last puppy there. I said, Have you got how many puppies have you got? Can I choose one? My wife had actually said to me, Don't come home with a dog because uh, I was doing some TV work there and um, I said, I haven't come home with a dog. I've come home with a puppy. And um, I'd love to say she was the easiest, most amazing little puppy from the start, but she was the opposite. And, you know, my big dog didn't even want to go near her at the SBCA. She stayed well away, and she's normally very friendly with the puppies. I couldn't even get this dog to come towards me. Inca wouldn't come close to me, and I thought, what's the matter with this puppy? Was she scared? Later on, I've realized she was such a shut-down, fearful, nervous little puppy. And it's only because of this method that she's turned into the most amazing dog in the world. There's a quick list of the problems we had. She is 24-7, 365. I can get her to hold that gaze at a camera for about a minute and a half. She won't even blink. She is 24-7, 365 in your face, which sounds good. She's attentive, but she can't switch off. And I had to figure out how do you stop these dogs being so attentive and so I've learned loads from her you know on the way home from the SBCA she growled at the vet she's barking at everything in the car when we took her to the beach the park she'd bark she'd run away and this is with me sat there and stood there this is with my big dog calmly stood there she would growl at little dogs and she's only 10 12 weeks old she was fairly growly and snarly at people oh she was a challenge but like I say putting all this stuff in place has absolutely turned her around and it's taught me so much that this method truly does work no matter what sort of dog you have. Let us move on now to the next section which is dog training and dog psychology. This bit is so important and I think you're going to love it because it's going to be the sort of the foundation of where we're going from because to help a dog you can't think like a dog you have to think Sorry, you can't think like a human. You have to think like a dog. So here's a little picture. If you look at all these animals here, you know you can't think like a bird or a, or a fish. You would never apply bird or fish psychology to your dog. It doesn't make sense to your dog. It'd be crazy. And yet we apply human psychology, and you just can't do that. You can't think like a bird or a fish or a human when you're working with your dog. There are some absolutely crucial differences which you have to understand. And this is all part of this this um, missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle that, you know, it's so many of us are treating our dogs like they are humans. And in many ways, they've got similar emotions and feelings. Don't get me wrong, I understand that. But there are also some very important differences. And that is what I would like to go through now. So, if you look at your dog, they're actually 99.8% the DNA of a wolf. And I just say that because that gives you an understanding and idea of where they've evolved from. And if you look at the wolf pack, or if you look at wolves or dogs in the wild, you'll see some pretty basic, simple stuff. And you know this stuff already, I'm sure, but I want to go through it now just to highlight the importance of some very basic, simple stuff. This is how things are set up in the wild. The wolf pack, wild dogs, you'll find there's an alpha male, there's an alpha female. They're in charge of the pack. They make all the big decisions. Underneath them are these other dogs in the pack. They moan and groan about who's in charge, rah, 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 but the pack leaders make all the big decisions. So above the line, they're the pack leaders, they make the decisions. That's the important bit. There's leaders and there's followers. The followers follow the leaders and the leaders lead. I know it sounds so simple, but it's important because, bear with me, here we go. This is how we want it set up in the house. The humans are in charge. They are the leaders. And again, this has nothing to do with being aggressive or beating your chest or, or anything like that. It's just, just like with parenting. You're the leaders. You've got to make these decisions to help your children, especially when they're young. And underneath, you want to have your dog. So your dog says, okay, so you make the decisions and I follow you. Okay, that makes sense. Here's the problem. Most of us, in fact, uh, to be honest, 99.9% .9 of people that I work with have it more set up like it is on the right and less like it is in the middle. So that's how you want it. You want it set up with the people at the top, not the people at the bottom, and I promise you. Even people who are going, yeah, yeah, I know all this stuff. I'm doing all that pack leader stuff. I can almost guarantee you that, you know, I've never found anybody who even, well, 
most people don't have the vaguest clue about how to really become the pack leader because being the pack leader has got nothing to do with you know I buy the dog food or I control the you know I, it's my house I drive the car or I can beat my chest and my dog will come when I call I can get my dog to sit before they eat it's nothing to do with that that's not being the pack leader there's some far more subtle interactions which is the real important stuff and uh, that's what it's all about now all of that being the pack leader is what I would call the foundation of this method becoming the pack leader is the foundation and you've got to get that bit right because on top of this foundation there are three sort of pillars of success there's three different areas and I could sort everything else that I do into these one of these three pillars first of all you've got to be consistent with all the stuff that you do you've got to be consistent everybody in the house has got to put it into place you've got to put it into place over a period of time and in different places and different areas you've got to be consistent it's quite boring consistency I know but that's how it is energy is another subtle area energy is sort of the way you do everything it's not so much about what you're doing it's the way you do it and it includes your feelings your emotions what you're thinking that's the energy side of things and the training is probably everything that you associate with dogs dog training leads collars harnesses whistles clickers cheese treats anything both positive to encourage your dog negative to stop your dog exercises all these little routines we do that's all the training side of things and they're just the three pillars which sit on top of this foundation which has got it you got to be the pack leader and in a nutshell what I'm going to explain is some training for each of these three behavioral issues that we have recall dog aggression and pulling on the leash but I'm also going to explain why you have to have that foundation of the pack leader in place because without it you are going to run into trouble and that's what I experience every single time I work with a dog it's not so much the training people need more of it's understanding why the pack leader stuff is so crucial that that's in place get all that in place and you get the results just like the lady who I worked with yesterday the funny thing about this lady yesterday when I first sat down with her I thought my gosh she knows everything she had books galore on dog training she'd been to courses she'd run puppy classes she'd done so much she knew so much about training and she had some serious behavioral issues from barking separation anxiety dog was digging out when she left the, the dog at home um, pulling on the leash all these sort of behavioral issues and it all came down to I realized as always the pack leader stuff was not in place okay on to the first topic of recall how can something so simple become so stressful so first of all I said we'd, we'd touch on why your puppy is not coming when you call them how to set yourself up to win rather than lose and the biggest mistake that people make with recall I mean in theory it should be so fun you know you call your dog and they come running um, but fear and reality are so different we've all seen it the absolute nightmare at the park where somebody's racing around the park shouting come here come here to the little dog and the dog's just getting more and more excited the owner's getting more and more frustrated and it all ends in tears so let's start with that answer to that simple question why your dog or new puppy is not coming to you when you call them here's the answer motivation your dog is simply not as motivated to come running towards you as they are to carry on doing what they're doing on the left hand side we've got what they're probably doing probably playing ball playing with other dogs running sniffing the ground having fun enjoying themselves and then we shout come here and they immediately think okay probably time to go home probably going to be put on the leash possibly going to be told off there's not much motivation for them to come the crazy thing is you know most dogs if you could s sort it out would actually love to come running especially if you gave them a little treat or a pat or a cuddle I mean I thought about a dog called Bugsy I worked with the other day um, it was a little pug he had no recall at all and yet the lady kept saying how he would do anything for food I thought well how come Bugsy won't come when she called him now the reason your dog is not coming is all to do with the sort of association that they have with you shouting for example Bugsy come here he had, Bugsy had a terrible contract she had a terrible contract with Bugsy but what I mean by that is if you think of it work you have a contract if you do work you'll get paid you know that's how it works it's a contract with Bugsy when you called him he didn't think anything good was going to happen and that's what we have to turn around Bugsy associated being called and coming to something negative 
And so he had to increase his motivation to come. And there are two ways you can increase your dog's motivation so that when you call them they don't just put their head down, put their cloth ears on and completely ignore you and carry on what you're doing. Because the other thing with this is I guarantee most dogs, 99% of dogs actually understand exactly what you're saying when you say come here. They just, just don't care. They stick their fingers up at you and carry on doing what they're doing. They ignore you. It's not that they don't understand. So this is how we want to look at turning it around. It's a very simple exercise. Most of you will have heard of it. You're probably doing a variation on it. I just want to go through it in, in great detail because it's, the devil is in the detail. Getting this bit right where you call your dog to you, you reward your dog and you release your dog is very, very powerful. It's all um, a powerful way of increasing your dog's motivation. And this is the training side of uh, increasing your dog's motivation. What you want to do is basically, when you want to get it, so when you say, say to your dog, hey, Bugsy, come here, you want Bugsy to start thinking he's just won the lottery. He doesn't know exactly what he's won, but you want Bugsy to come charging over, you give him the reward, and then you say to Bugsy, okay, you can go now. Now, do you think your dog would come running if that's what they understood your meaning when you say come here? Most dogs would come like an absolute rocket, especially if sometimes they're going to get their favorite food. Not just a boring treat, but something absolutely amazing. And if your dog's not into food, that's all good. You can still use a ball or a toy or a stick or something like that. You can use pats and cuddles. And if you're concerned that we're, we're just going to go down the food treat um, track, well, don't worry. We're going. I'll show you how you can fade these food treats out. And that's another powerful concept. I, show, I can show you that in another video inside uh, this uh, dog training program which I've put together. You can learn about all that stuff about fading food treats out. But for now, to start with, use amazing treats. Vary them and sometimes give your dog the jackpot. Now one of the things about this exercise is you don't want to be using the same food and you don't want to be just giving your dog one dry pellet, one dry biscuit, one dry biscuit. You've got to make it random, just like the lottery. When somebody says you've won the lottery, you're immediately thinking $20 million. You're not thinking, oh, I might have won, won $20 pound or $20. That's not exciting. Your dog's the same. So think about the food you're using. Chicken, cheese, bacon, amazing treats like that. Use a little sausage. It's a pack of sausages only costs a couple of dollars. You take one, you chop it into 10 pieces. And you use those 10 pieces to call your dog only a few times. And sometimes you'll give them more than one piece. So they come running, you say, good boy, one piece, good boy, two, three pieces, four pieces. And then you say, okay, let them go. If you make it all positive like that, of course your dog is going to come. Because it's pretty much the two things that they love most in life. Running and eating. And they can go back to doing what they're doing. So you've totally increased their motivation to come. And you can fade out that food later. It's not going to be a problem. Now, one more tip. I'm giving, hopefully you can see, I'm giving you as many tips here as I can. Of course, I can't give you everything. I'm going to show you where you can get more information, more tips and training and videos on this sort of stuff later on. But here's one more tip. How to set yourself up to win rather than lose. This is a very simple trick or tip that dog trainers have. Here it is. Only call your dog if you think they will come. That's how you, sell, you set yourself up to win. I was working with a dog yesterday. I worked with a lot of dogs yesterday. It was a busy day. But I was working with a dog yesterday and you know he didn't have a recall. So when he went over and he met the most beautiful West Highland Terrier who had a little pink bow in her hair and a little pink collar, she looked so pretty. And he fell madly and deeply in love with this dog straight away. It was hilarious. And I said to the owner, let's not call him now. Because if we'd called him at that point, he wouldn't have come. He was flirting with his little girlfriend. It was beautiful to watch. So we waited until he was sort of a little bit bored, and then we called him. And his owner called him several times. She did a wonderful job. And, uh, yeah, he started to get the idea. But we were setting ourselves up to win. And that's really important. Later on, you can build it up so that you can call your dog in absolutely any situation. But to start with, start simple, and then slowly build it up. Okay, one more question or one more thing that uh, I said we'd cover off. The biggest mistake that people make is this, calling your dog too often. Don't call your dog too often. If you call your dog too often, they're going to get bored. They are not a, a robot. They're not a remote control car. 
they haven't got ever ready batteries in so you're better off not doing too many recalls and when you do recall your dog you give them an amazing reward rather than doing lots and lots and lots of these recalls and they're going to get bored of it and you can slowly work up to the really tricky ones where your dog is playing with the, the their little girlfriend the little beautiful um, West Highland Terrier with a pink bow and a hair and a pink collar and eventually when your dog has got enough motivation to come they will even come in that situation so that's the simple exercise call reward and release them immediately don't forget that release okay here's the second very powerful way of increasing your dog's motivation and it's all through not so much dog training that was the first bit this bit is about becoming the pack leader it's dog psychology it's understanding the dogs will respond far more if you're the pack leader than if they think they're the pack leader pack leaders can do what they want your dog is going to ignore you if they think they're the pack leader so here's the analogy imagine you're in the office and you've got a boss and I'm thinking that these two pictures are both of male boss and a female boss and you sort of pick up the phone and you say uh, excuse me boss can you just come uh, to my desk immediately I don't know whether your boss is going to come. Your boss is probably going to say, well, what is it? Why should I come? Why don't you come and speak to me about it in my office? You can't tell your boss what to do, you know. But if your boss was to say to you, hey, come here, you'd probably respond immediately. And that's the whole concept of where you have to sort of be the pack leader to, to be able to get your dog to come. If your dog sees themselves as above you in the pack, they're kind of going to listen. It's the same as in you know the human world there's leaders and followers and you know if you're in the office for example and you see somebody who you see them as the new person who's just started and they're below you in the pack and they're below you in the office and they're not really going to be telling you what to do and they suddenly just shout at you and say can you just come here a minute are you going to respond to them probably not you're probably going to say well I'll be there in a minute dogs are no different you can increase your dog's motivation just by understanding how to show them that you are the pack leader and that you're in charge. Okay, I want to keep flying through this. So there you have it. Two very powerful ways of increasing your dog's motivation. And uh, it will make all the difference. Let us move on to dog aggression. In this section, I want to cover off, first of all, why dog aggression is so misunderstood. And I want to touch on this method that I use, which is so completely different. It's such a different approach to typical dog training because it really revolves around the dog psychology part, about the pack leader part, about this missing piece of the jigsaw, which when you get that bit right, then everything else sort of starts to fall into place. And it is very simple. It is amazing and it works that's why I use it and that's why I'm sharing it with you now it's the easiest way to stop dog aggression ever occurring so if you've got a puppy you just have to put these simple steps in place and if you're sensing that your dog may be a little bit dominant a little bit fearful if you think you may have a bit of an aggression issue brewing on the horizon then to stop it from escalating any further you put this stuff in place I was wondering what's the best way of explaining this to you before um, but last week, sometime last week, I, I did a had a, a experience with Max. He was a seven-year-old Jack Russell, and it sort of explained exactly what I'm going to show you here. So I'm going to run through all of this dog aggression section with with Max. Let me start things off by setting the scene. This is not actually a photo of Max. I've got to say that up front. He was a Jack Russell, seven-year-old, but this is not actually his photo. The family had had him from six months old. And he'd started getting aggressive when he was one year old. He was now seven years old, so there was a lot of aggression. It had built and built, and it was now in an absolute terrible situation where he couldn't get near. He couldn't even see another dog without going absolutely nuts. And he didn't stop barking. And they said he tried to bite. He jumped up and grabbed a uh, what was it? It was an Irish wolfhound. He jumped up and grabbed it by the throat and hung on the collar and just hung there. Luckily, the Irish wolfhound hadn't even responded. It had been very calm. But he, that's how bad it was. It was real bad. So why was Max being so aggressive? Why are dogs in general who are aggressive being so aggressive? First of all, look, it is a complex situation. Don't get me wrong. There's many different reasons. Every dog's going to be slightly different. It's a huge topic, and um, we've, got to, we've got to move through it. But generally, this is what I would say. There's so many reasons it could be. It could be top left there. 
partly to do with the, the breeding of your dog. It could be the sort of the DNA on the right top right, the, the DNA of your dog. It could be to do with their personality and character of your dog. You know, some of this is I don't agree with all of this. I'm just saying this is what some people are saying, and you may have heard. It could be that your dog is just aggressive. It just likes doing it. It's just over the top crazy and uh, just likes fighting. Just overexcited. It could be something that happened when he was a sibling. He was picked on by siblings. People say that, and it could have been how he was raised. That stuff went wrong, or he wasn't raised properly. Or he didn't wasn't socialized enough. So these are all the different things that could have contributed to it. Some of them I agree with more than others. Now, I want to move on quite quickly. And so what I would actually say is this. Just like with little Max, I don't really know what his history was. I don't really know whether he wasn't socialized, and that's the biggest con contributor to his aggression. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter, no matter why he's aggressive and why he's there. The more important thing is knowing how to move him on, how to get on how to get him out of his aggression. And this is the biggest problem that people have. It's hard to train a dog when they aren't listening. So don't worry too much about why your dog is aggressive. Could be a number of things. We're going to touch on a couple right now. But the biggest problem that you actually have is that when your dog sees another dog, just like Max, they can go absolutely berserk. They're not taking any notice of you at all. They're doing their own thing. And the chances are, in my opinion, there's a couple of things that they probably are doing. They think they're in charge. They're being protective of both the pack, their property. They're protecting themselves. They're scared. They could be being a bit dominant and just saying, I'm in charge around here. But again, don't worry too much about trying to analyze why your dog's being a problem or being aggressive. Focus on the fact that the real problem you've got is that they're not listening to you. So what that means is all of the training you're doing is not really having the impact that you want it to have. When you think of it like that, doesn't that make total sense? If your dog's not taking any notice of you, your thoughts, your words, your actions, you're in trouble. Because how are you going to train your dog to change their behavior? Food's not going to deter most of these dogs who are in the zone and they're barking. Shouting's not going to have any impact. It's going to make it worse. The dogs think they're in charge. They're doing exactly what they think is best in that situation to protect themselves, keep themselves safe, whether to launch an attack, to get the first punch in, to get the first bite in, to protect their property. So that's the problem. You need a dog to start taking notice of you. So here's the solution. Two steps again. The first step, and it has to be in this order, and it was with Max. I walked in and I became the pack leader. I walked into that house and within a few minutes I was doing stuff nobody had ever done to dear old little Max. He couldn't believe it. He tried all these tricks. But I was saying, no, I'm in charge. I'm the pack leader. And you have to get that bit right. This is the missing piece of the jigsaw. If you get this bit right, the rest will follow. Your dog will start going, so I'm not in charge. You're in charge. So I should follow you and watch what you're doing. Yes, that's right. And when you're the pack leader, then everything else becomes so much easier. Here's an analogy I made up. I love this analogy. The pack leader leads and the pack follows. So just imagine this. There's a pack of wolves or dogs in the wild running around and there's an ice cream van parked up and the dogs see the ice cream van. Now, if the alpha wolves wander up to the ice cream van and pee on the wheels and then wander off, that's what the rest of the pack would do. And if the alpha wolves walked up to the ice cream man and started biting and attacking and being aggressive to the ice cream van tires, that's what the rest of the pack would do. And if the alpha wolves kind of stayed away from the ice cream van and just wandered past it, that's what the rest of the pack would do. There wouldn't be any need for the alphas to sort of train the rest of the pack as to what to do. They would just do it and the rest of the pack would follow. And I know that sounds obvious, but that's so important. Because that's saying that basically the way that the alpha wolves behave, the pack leaders behave, dogs being naturally a pack animals where there are leaders and followers, the followers will follow. And they will trust the pack leader's decision and go, yep, I'll follow you. I'll do what you're doing. I remember when I was young, I walked, I was in England walking through some woods and we came into a clearing. The clearing had a big church in the middle of it. So it was surrounded by forest and woods. There was gravestones and leaves blowing around and it was all cold and windy. And I thought, I was only little. I was about eight years old, holding my dad's hand. I was looking up at my dad. I was only a little boy. And I looked at him. I thought, we're on a horror movie set. This is not good. And I was so worried. I looked up at my dad and he was yawning. 
Ooh, chewing something gum or eating an apple and you know, eyes half closed. He didn't have a care in the world. And I took one glance at him and I knew we were fine. There was nothing to worry about. And I still remember that to this day. I don't know why, but I do. I remember going, my dad's in charge. I trust him. He knows best. He knows if we're in trouble. And if he's not worried, I'm not worried. Now, imagine my dad hadn't have been there and I'd had my younger sister with me. Then we'd have been in a different situation because I wouldn't have had anybody to, I could trust and respect to make the decision to show me how to behave and I would have become very scared and worried and behaved very differently and that's how it is with your dog. Why is dog aggression so misunderstood? Because until you've put step number one in place, your dog's really not going to take any notice of all the training. So back to Max, I walked in, I became the pack leader very quickly, very powerful and um, yeah, I started putting in place what I call these five five golden rules or five games that I play with the dog to make sure they know I'm the pack leader. And then, once I'd done that, then I could show Max how I wanted him to behave. So when you when you do this method, this is the training part now. So we've done the first bit, which is all to do with the missing piece of the jigsaw, becoming the pack leader, and now the second part is the training side of this how to train your dog not to be aggressive, but you've got to get it in the right order. You can show your dog how you want them to behave. And this is why it's such a simple, beautiful, calm way of working because when you get it in this order and you get it right, it's really easy. So we went outside with Max and I started showing him how to behave. And this, I've made three basic um, steps to this process. Here we go. The first step when you're working with your dog is to find a starting point. Find a place where your dog calms, where they calm right down and relax. So you do have to have control of the environment, control of your dog primarily, whether whether they're on a short line or a long line. You you know, you can't have your dog off leash at a dog park if they're aggressive and say, well, what do I do when my dog's getting attacked and attacking other dogs and I can't catch them and there's no recall. You have to have control of the situation. And so you start off very simply and calmly. So with, with dear Max, because he was so new to all of this, he hadn't been calm around a dog for about six years. We started off with me, with one of my dogs on the far side of the street, Max walking the other direction, and about 100 yards away, he started to bark and get stressed, and we just stopped. I explained exactly what to do, stop, wait, and uh, took a bit of time. Slowly, he started to calm down. Now... We've got, to, we've got to keep moving on with this, and like I say, there's loads more I'd love to share with you, more videos and stuff, and I'm giving you the best that I can now to explain it, but obviously at the end of this, uh, this coaching session, I'm going to show you where you can get a whole load more information, and you can actually watch me doing these live consultations with uh, videos and um, showing you exactly the steps that we, we came through, because this is an important stage, and one of the things about it is it takes time. You've got to be patient and calm and trust that it will change, and it does change, and Max calmed down, and that's when we were able to move on to the next stage. Stage, the second part of this training is you form a new pattern, so when he's calm, rather than rushing even closer to my dog, we just stayed there, and the dog on the left is just doing a high five, you can do tricks with your dog, you can sit and eat a sandwich and relax on the grass with your dog, he may be sat 100, 200 yards away from the dogs who are playing, you may be 10 yards away from a dog who's on a leash or behind a fence, but you find a place where your dog is calm and then you relax. The tortoise there is because you take it so slowly at this stage. Don't just rush on and go, right, I'm ready to make it even more complicated and more stressful and more stimulation for your dog and stress them out again. When you've got your dog to calm right down to a level one or two out of ten where they're lying down, you've probably never seen it before where the dog's so, your dog's maybe so close to another dog, just enjoy it. Maybe quit whilst you're ahead, but at least take some time for your dog's neural network, the brain connections in, to, to rewire so that they understand this is a new way of behaving. Play some games there. And then, if you're feeling really confident and your dog is super calm, just take a little inch. Just take a tiny little step closer to the other dogs. Raise the bar. Because you've got to take this slowly. We've got to move closer to the dogs. But the point is, take it slowly. Don't rush it. And don't focus on the dogs. I've put here energy flows where your focus goes. So where your focus is, that's where your energy of your dog is actually going to go as well. So even though you move closer to these other dogs, you don't look at them. Turn your back on the dogs that you're moving towards. Maybe go sideways, and again, it's easy to see this with videos, and I can show you that sort of stuff. But 
Yeah, that's what you're doing. You're slowly moving closer to the dog, but not focusing on them. And the whole thing here is it's all about doing it very slowly. And that's pretty much it. Step one, become the pack leader. Step two, show your dog that you're in charge. And of course, by putting this all in place, you'll prevent any problems with the young puppy. And if you think, hey, I've tried all that stuff. Well, the biggest mistake is probably that you haven't effectively completed step number one, become the pack leader. It's uh, so powerful, so important that you get that step right. When you're in charge, it's so easy to show your dog how you want them to behave. So easy when you're in charge. I've worked with so many dogs who are quote, quote, aggressive, but once I, I, I've worked with them, it's amazing how many of them are actually not aggressive. Once I take control and show them how to behave, they go, okay. I always attack the other dogs, but then I, I turn up and I say, you don't need to, and they go, okay, cool. It's easy when you're the pack leader. If you're not the pack leader, it's real tricky. Okay, we've got to move on. Loads more I'd love to share with you, but we've got to move on to pulling on the leash. Why more training is not the answer. When you look at dog training, uh, trying to train a puppy on a leash, they see it so differently from us. I want to touch on that. Why you can't outmuscle a dog, we're going to touch on that. Um, and why all the behavioral issues outside of the home are so closely linked to how your dog walks on the, on the leash. So let's first of all look at puppies and dogs who pull on the leash. Of course, with puppies, I must say, there's lots more to walking your dog on a leash for a little puppy. There are a lot more little techniques and tricks. And again, that's all in my dog training program, how to get an eight-week-old puppy walking beautifully off the leash, but by your side when you say the word walk. It's amazing how simple it is when you've got some little tricks up your sleeve. But let's have a look at what happens through your dog's eyes when we shout walkies. Your dog's energy goes through the roof. And uh, that's the opposite of what you want. You know, I've asked the question, are we actually training our dogs to do the wrong thing by getting them excited? Is there more going on than just your dog being happy when you shout walkies and they're bouncing up and down, grabbing the leash, pulling you towards the, the door? And the answer is yes. You can't let your dogs just take control, which is actually what's happening. You can't, you know, when, when you bring the lead out and their energy is really sky high and they're jumping up, grabbing the lead, and you put it on and they drag you to the front door, they're actually telling you exactly what to do. They're making decisions. And the problem with that is pack leaders make decisions, and if your dog takes control of the walk and thinks they're in charge, makes all the decisions, then you're going to be in real trouble when you're outside. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can't let your dogs take control of the walk at the beginning and then somehow hijack it and win control back later on. So really calmly start your walk and wait for their energy to keep dropping down. So let me just go through this. Imagine the start of the walk is so important. Pick up your leash and just imagine you wait for your dog to calm down before you even put the leash on. So jumping up, you turn your back, walk away, wait for that energy to drop before you even call them over. And you might think, my dog will never calm down, but I promise you they will. I've worked with so many dogs where people said, my dog will not calm down, but they do. And then you can proceed to the next stage. You stand up, and if your dog pulls, again, you can either wait. Two options you've got. You either wait, or you can postpone the walk till later. And you basically, your dog will learn that all that excitement and them trying to tell you what to do and drag you through the door doesn't work. And there's loads and loads of other little tips I'd love to share with you, such as, you know, walking in and out of the front door. You keep going in and out of it until your dog calms down and through the gate. Again, another important place. All these little things will help. Because basically the pack leader leads. This is where it's all coming to. <clears throat> if you're the pack leader, then your dogs, if you're the pack leader in the house, I should say, then it's so much easier to be the pack leader on the walk as well. And this is where this missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle is so important. Because if you look at the wolves in the wild, if you look at dogs in the wild, they don't go wandering off on their own, doing their own thing whenever they want. They only actually go when the pack leaders stand up and say, we're going now. And that is it's amazing. If you think about it, that's why dogs are so responsive and reactive and acutely aware of when you're going for a walk. It's all in their DNA. They have to be aware and watching. We're going, we're going, now we're going. So, and as soon as that happens, the dogs start saying, right, I'm in charge, I'm going to take over now. Just like in the wild, there are leaders and followers, and the leaders lead. And the rest of the dogs will follow. So, the basic thing here, I guess, is your dog probably knows how to walk nicely on the lead. But if they think they're in charge inside the house, 
it's very hard for you then to try and lead them on the lead. They're going to automatically think, now I'm in charge. And that's why you simply can't outmuscle your dog, no matter how long you try spending, trying to get them to walk behind you. If your dog thinks that they're the pack leader, they will lead from the front. And that's what's happening in this picture. That pack leader at the front is leading the way. The rest of the wolves are following. You have to be the pack leader first. So I want to just finish on a little story here about Billy. This, again, is not a picture of Billy, but he did look almost exactly like this. It was a fascinating lesson for me um, about how dogs don't actually need much more training on the leash. I'll whiz through it real quick, but in a nutshell, I got a phone call. I got a phone call saying, hey, we've got a problem with our dog. Primarily, he's you know, bitten a lot of people and um, would like you to come and help with us with him. He's been on drugs. They're not working. He's still biting people. He'd bitten five people, people before I turned up. He's pulling on the leash. Loads of little problems. I turned up there. <clears throat> Billy looked very friendly and happy. I walked in. Billy came up behind me. He was relaxed. He stood behind me for a couple of minutes. Uh, we were chatting. We were all very relaxed. I started to walk a little bit and suddenly, bang, right on my left buttock. I can still feel it now. I can imagine it. Boom, right in there. Bit me on the bum. Wow. That was a lesson. Calm, Billy. Just went, yo, yo, yo. I'm down here. I'm the number one. I'm important. Don't ignore me sort of thing. Anyway, to cut a long story short, went in the bathroom, dropped my pants, had a look, big bite on my bum. I'm thinking, oh my goodness me, I was a bit unsure how to move on. But Billy seemed a fairly relaxed, happy-go-lucky chap. And uh, so I came back out and sat there in the corner very carefully. Billy went into timeout. He came out about 20 minutes later. He's very relaxed, almost, you know, he felt bad. You can see he felt bad about what he'd done. He made another mistake. And to cut a long story short, I stayed very calm and I convinced Billy I'm in charge, Billy. And Billy reacted and responded in an amazing way. Because about half an hour later, when I plucked up the courage to kind of, you know, start working with him in close quarters again, we got the lead on Billy, and he was pretty pulley with them still. They were in the inside the house. We put a lead on Billy, and I said to the owners, "Okay, just just come a bit closer to me." I was, I was wary that Billy could give me another bite, but I felt like he was going to be good. And so I held out my hand near theirs. I said, give me the lead. And as I took that lead, you could see Billy's whole demeanor drop. It was almost like, you're in charge. And Billy performed like a dog in a show ring on his lead with me. He performed beautifully, walking around, chest up, tail up, beautifully, walking by my side, looking up at me. His owners couldn't believe it. We went outside the house, into the garden. We walked around there. We went outside the gate, onto the street. He was absolutely 100% perfectly behaved on that lead for me. And the thing is, I realized the way I'd responded to him biting me was so sort of calm, gentle, but I also gave him the message, Billy, I'm in charge here. He responded and reacted to that in a way which was basically, yep, you're the pack leader, you're in charge. And the thing is, he walked perfectly on the leash. He didn't need any more training. And that's how it is for so many dogs. They don't actually need more training. It's the other part of the pulling on the leash that you need to look at, which is being the pack leader. And that's it. You know, So many of these behavioral issues that you then have outside the house are all to do with your dog thinking they're in charge. If you've got problems with the recall, problems with your dog pulling on the leash and being aggressive to cats, the bikes, the cars, barking at people or things like that, when your dog is calm and relaxed and you've got them on the leash, you just show them how to behave because all the things that Billy normally did, which was lunging at people and joggers and oh, the list went on, he was just perfect. He walked down the main street perfectly by my side and it was all because of that pack leader stuff rather than any training. I didn't actually do any training with him, just took the lead and he was great. He was gold. Okay, so there we have it. We've got recall, dog aggression, pulling on the leash. There's so much training that you can do. Many of you have probably done lots of this training. Some of you probably know more training. I've got more dog training books than I have. But it all counts for nothing when the key piece of the jigsaw is missing. I've got one little analogy of treating the cause of the problem, which is this foundation, being the pack leader, rather than treating the symptoms. Here's a house which is falling down. Foundations are absolutely gone. The cause of the problem here is it's got bad foundations. And you've got to, to help this house, to mend this house, you have to fix the foundations. 
or you're going to end up going nowhere. It is no point in painting this house if the windows start cracking. There's no point saying, look, I've got some great glass. I've got some brilliant glass. I'll replace your windows. Even if it's beautiful glass, really expensive glass, there's no point because there's something fundamentally wrong with this house and we've got to sort out the real cause of the problem or you just go bouncing from one problem to another to another and it's like that with most dog behavioral issues with puppy training you've got to become the pack leader sort out that foundation and then it's actually so much easier to build up from there and show your dog or puppy how you want them to behave <clears throat> okay now in a second we're gonna pull the winner of the three months of free training but first what I want to do is at the very start of this uh, coaching session I promised you that if you stayed on till the end I'd go through my training program where you could get hold of a ton more awesome information about recall dog aggression pulling on the leash this puppy training program and every other behavioral issue and you'll save yourself absolutely hundreds of dollars so this is what I want to go through now basically as you can see it covers off all this sort of stuff and I'm just going to jump there now. So bear with me as I jump from this slide. And we're going to go. This is live on the internet. So just bear with me as we uh, let me change across. There I am. Still here, guys. So here we go. So this is this is all live. And this is the dog training website that I've put together. So here's the first screen. This is what you'd come to if you joined the website. Let me just press play. Hi, I'm Doggy Dan. Congratulations on taking the next step to understanding your dog <coughs> and strengthening the bond between you. It really fills me with great pleasure to be able to share with you the knowledge I have. So there you go. As you can see, there's, there's about 300 videos in here. And here's, here's the first section, Pack Leader. Pack Leader Introduction. Rule number one or game number one, number two, number three. So there's all these videos. You click on any of these links, puppy training. So any of these links you can click on. And as you can see, there's dog problems. And if you come down here, you come to dog aggression. And with dog aggression, there's people, dogs who are aggressive to people, dogs who live together and are aggressive. There's a case study on a dog here. And with any of these, you know, there's dog aggression towards other animals, dog aggression towards objects. I'm just going to click on this one just to give you an idea of the sort of thing that's included in the site. So here we have a dog aggression case study. It's a dog named Cruz, lovely big American bulldog. And it's just a consultation where I go through some of the stuff that we've been going through about how to work with a dog, you know, and there's videos of me working. So it's just for this one consult or this one little area. We've got about 20 minutes of video there. And let's just have a look at a... In this video, I want to show you how I work with a dog who's called aggressive by his owners because he's shown aggression. He's a lovely boy, but you certainly have to take it slowly. And that's what I want to show you in this video, exactly what to do. From the very, very word go, when he first sets eyes on my dogs and uh, some of the safety precautions and the sort of steps that you've got to take to uh, keep everybody safe. He's 17 months old. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, he's aggressive towards strange people. Yep. Yeah. He doesn't know. He's overprotective. Really protective. Yeah. Um, aggressive to other dogs. So, okay, jumping out of there. So look, there's so many different videos here. I can't go through them all, but this is one area that I'd love you to, to visit if you, if you come to the site, Pack Leader section. You click on any of these links, it takes you through the five golden rules for becoming that pack leader, which is the missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle. If you have a puppy, let me give you an idea of what's inside the puppy training section. General health, poisonous food, plants, getting started before you even bring your puppy home there's a section on that getting off to the right start meeting the world meeting other dogs behavioral issues we've got toilet training submissive urination barking chewing mouthing and biting jumping up stealing crying when they're left alone all sorts of things there and here we've got and with all these issues if you just click on for example barking again it takes you to a site how to handle barking puppies here's a you know several videos on on each little topic 
here I am working with a lovely little dog. So a very reactive dog there, so hardly any noise, and there he is, woof, woofing, all day long, poor little doggy. And this is a beautiful project which I absolutely love, Project Moses. This is basically the video diary of me raising my puppy from eight weeks old. So eight weeks old, here's all the videos, bringing your new puppy home, Moses meets the family, puppy's crying at night, crate training Moses, and that's eight weeks old, at nine weeks old, ten weeks I go through all the different weeks, right through to eight months old, and... Um, here we here we have uh, you know ten weeks old. Let's have a little look. Update on Moses' socialization at ten weeks old. So it's like a video diary. If you've got a new puppy, you will absolutely love this stuff because it covers almost everything off. Here's little Moses meeting some other dogs. Hi there, Doggy Dan here. I thought I'd give you just an update on uh, little Moses' uh, socialization. He's met um, obviously my three dogs. And here's the black dog, that's the dog as it will. I'm just jumping through the video here. She does a lot of growling. Anyway, look, I'd love to show you more. There's about 300 videos in total, so I've got to fly through this. If there's any delay, then I guarantee the delay is not the videos. The videos will play beautifully off the internet. But because I'm doing a webinar at the same time, using the same bandwidth, it may be showing a little bit slow to you guys, but that's all it is. Now, moving on fast, dog problems. We've got all these problems, dogs running away from home, dog aggression, we've touched on that, barking. Now, even within the barking section, we've got barking on the walk, barking for attention, barking around the property, barking in the car, barking when they're left alone, barking at the door. All that stuff. Separation anxiety. If you've got a dog who's stressed, who's hyperactive, jumping up, pulling on the leash, not coming when called, fears, phobias, obsessions, eating poop, it's all in there. Dog training, the nature of dogs. So, loads of stuff. And if you, be, if you join this uh, my dog training program, you also get access to this membership site uh, where you can ask questions. Sorry, I should say you get access to the forum. So there's 13 questions for me to answer in there. And basically, you can see there's hundreds and hundreds of questions and people's um, looking for help, and I'm answering all those questions. I answer all those questions personally myself. So that's giving you a little bit of a, an idea of this video website. Now... Let's just show you a little there. Uh, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it actually on. I will leave it on a little puppy, maybe some a little puppy project, something like that. Let's have a look. Where are we? Desensitizing your puppy to. This would be good. Desensitizing your puppy to things could be good. So here's a, just a video. I'll just play that whilst I talk you when through. Puppies are young, they're far more willing to experience new things. So desensitization, socialization. Here's little Moses. I'll turn the volume down. Okay. Let me just turn that right down. So if you're getting pretty excited, then good. You should be excited because you're absolutely going to love this, what I call my Aladdin's Cave of Dog Training. And I'm going to just go through the kind of practical stuff now of, uh, of how it all works and how you can get access to it. Because what I've done is I've made it so this entire site is only $1 for you to trial it for three days. And you may be wondering why I've done that. Well, it's, it's simply this. I really want to share my knowledge. I'm so passionate about helping you and uh, giving you the information you need. So you get access to the entire thing for just a dollar. I want you to be absolutely certain and over the moon with the site, happy with it, before you decide to stay on. Now, after your three days, if you choose to stay on, then you'll be charged 37 American dollars per month. That's usually, but as I said at the beginning, you guys, you've stayed till the end, you get a very special offer. So, there's 20% off that price, and it's only going to be $29.60. And you still get the $1 trial, so it's $1 trial for three days, and then it's going to be $29.60 to stay on for a whole month. Now, we do have one lucky winner. Who I'm going to announce now, I said at the beginning, we'd get one person who gets three months access for free, and her name is Deanna Lawson. So, Deanna Lawson, congratulations, we've got your email. We'll send you a password through, and you'll, uh, you'll be able to just log straight in and go into that site, and you'll come up on that that first page. Now, I'll stop it here just to show you that for the rest of you, you do have to spend one dollar, but it's only a dollar, 
and when you click on the link which is in the email to get to this uh, coaching session if you click on that link this is where you're going to come it's the webinar 20% off page 20% discount on this page right now but only for the next 48 hours so basically this is where you'll come this is what the page will look like there's a video of me working with some dogs get started now for only one dollar you just click this button on the right and you'll be away so go for it it's open now go 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 so it'll count down timer down there the timer on the bottom you only get two days at that special price here's some uh, video testimonial of uh, people who've had amazing results check it all out and that like I say we'll, we'll give you all the puppy training you could imagine it solves all the behavioral issues it shows you that missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle just it's so simple so powerful now let me just jump back into the uh, the site itself here we are there I am playing with your little Moses as one as one lady said to me regarding this site I, I, she said I've spent thousands of dollars on dog training puppy training books DVDs when I came to your site and saw the one dollar trial I put the five golden rules in place and I thought yep that is exactly what I have been looking for for so long and uh, you know I, I, I'm proud of it how amazing is that remember I told you at the start if you stayed to the end I'd show you where you can get a whole load of amazing material that will transform your relationship with your dog and save you hundreds of dollars well here it is so there's no need to keep wondering how good your dog could be or how should I train my puppy or how should I solve these behavioral problems you can have the puppy of your absolute dreams you can have that and you can start putting it all in place now because you'll discover that you know there's hundreds of videos inside the site they're high definition most of them are very high definition they're, they include the real key to success they show you me becoming the pack leader they show me working with with dog consultations and you know I share that knowledge with people for four hundred and forty dollars in a consultation and you're getting that plus all the videos you're gonna get an awful lot so there is also um, a PDF a PDF of the notes will be attached to the email so what I suggest is go check out that email now because the link is on there you can click on it and go get started with your training because these issues don't just sort themselves out they don't self-correct they generally get worse and the great thing is that no matter what problem you're experiencing we can work through it together you can ask me those questions in the forum let me just stop this now I'm gonna just jump back to to just stop it there just come back to me so you can see I'm still here there you go Ooh. so here I am still me hope you've enjoyed that webinar this is pretty much the end of the webinar now the end of this coaching session what I suggest is uh, yeah, check out that one dollar trial it's in that email just click on that link it'll take you to that page and then you spend that dollar, have a look at it, and if you feel like, yeah, I can see this is the missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle, you're probably going to go, wow, I need all these other videos, I want to learn all this stuff. It's going to be the best dollar that you ever spend. Don't wait, don't leave it any longer. Discover what thousands of people have already discovered. That you don't have to spend a fortune to have an amazing relationship with your dog, to have the dog of your dreams, to raise your puppy perfectly. You don't have to spend a fortune. The knowledge and, and uh, the, the tips and training techniques and the missing piece of the puzzle is there. It's all for you. So let me just check. I think that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So all I can say is thank you ever so much for taking the time to be with me today to, uh, to, to, to come and join and be part of this. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing some of you inside the site. You're going to absolutely love it. So thank you very much. I'm Doggy Dan. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. So tell everybody about it, and as always, love your dog.